This is the bush chicken. It is the news that we see up. We have a special uh, interview with Councillor Charles Walker Bromsky, and my name is Baktima Sina. Welcome, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Tell us your vision for Liberia. You know, this is my third time running. Over a period of 12 or more years, Liberians from all walks of life have joined us in crafting a vision for our country. That vision is embraced in, by, by four hours. We call them the four strategic principles of our platform. Reconciliation, reform, recovery, and rebuilding. It's time that we bring our people together. We must move into the future as one nation, not as individual ethnic groups. Our country has grown along ethnic lines too long. It's time to have a president with the moral authority to say we are the same people. You may be Christian, I may be Muslim, I may be Basa, you may be Pele, you may be Madingo, I may be Kwan, whatever it is. That thing that seems like it will divide us, it is the role of the leadership of this country to ensure that those things that bind us together are more important. We want to reform every institution of government, every way we do things. Well, it is the education system, the health delivery system, healthcare delivery system. Well, it is empowering Liberians and growing this economy. You know, regrettably, the economic policies of the Selig Boaka administration has been based on what Tutman crafted in the late 50s and early 60s. That is economic growth strictly, absolutely dependent on the exploitation of unprocessed natural resources. A liberty party government intends to diversify our economy. We will invest more in the agriculture sector of this country where a substantial number of Liberians live. We will ensure that downstream industries are created for every concession that is granted out. Something must be there for a Liberian to do business. We're going to empower Liberians. And we're going to start the process of empowering Liberians by leveraging public procurement. That's all part of the, the reform process. You know, our government spends at least 150 million United States dollars every year purchasing goods and services. Only a minute portion of that and, and enter the pockets of Liberians. We want to change that. I want to make sure that Liberians are able to contract with their governments. Liberians are able to make money and grow this economy. It's a new day that's coming for our country. And I'm not talking about cosmetic changes. I'm talking about real change. Okay? We're going to change our, the way we, we teach in this country. Our education system. One can easily ask the question, an issue that I have pondered with. How is it possible for Liberian students to spend 12 years, graduate from high school, go to the University of Liberia, take the entrance exam, and fail. Something wrong, something is fundamentally wrong. You think what is that? Curricula of the high schools and the curricula of the colleges and universities haven't been syn synchronized. High schools are supposed to prepare our young people to go to college. College is supposed to be prepared to receive them. So if you're teaching the kids and you're graduating them from high school, they should be able to enter college. So we're going to make sure, starting with this, where any child is unable to pass the entrance exam, there are going to be a remedial program at every college so that if the child falls below a passing grade but within a certain range, 
the child is admitted to college, but the child does remedial courses until they can come up to standard. But we also want to make our education curricula more relevant. Students must be able to leave school, whether it is vocational school, whether it is high school, other, other, other high schools or universities, prepared for the job market. Going into regular high school, what you would call traditional high school, there has to be a parallel approach to it. Some kids go to high school to prepare them for college. Some go to high school as a finishing school. So there must be sufficient vocational school so that kids can come out and move straight into the job market. We'll talk about healthcare. Okay? Over the years, Liberia has placed too much emphasis on curative medicine. A Liberty Party government will reverse that. We will put a lot of emphasis on preventive medicine. You know, take the example of the Ebola, right? If we had been practicing preventive medicine in this country, public health, where people are going out there and educating people of the different diseases that are out there and how to prevent them, it would have made a lot of difference. You would not have had 5,000 persons losing their lives. A Liberty Party government is going to start its outreach program with a fleet of mobile clinics, 73 vehicles, one for each electoral district, okay? And we'll look forward to attracting physician assistants, nurses, and lab technicians who will be placed <coughs> in these vehicles. And from 8 o'clock in the morning, they will go from market to market, from village to village, from school to school, educating our people, treating them, those diseases that can be prevented, will be prevented, and those diseases that can be cured will often have to be referred to a larger hospital, will be cured right by the mobile, mobile clinic attendants. Okay? But we're going to change this country. The third era is basically recovery, meaning recovering those values that once made us one people, that made us a great nation. We used to be the lone star of Africa. We're not anymore. We used to export Judeo-Christian values. We don't, and that world today is not that for exporting war and violence. It must be changed. But I speak of the values that we may not be able to legislate, but the values that we can talk about as the leader, as the president of this country. I want to be able to see a society again where we care for each other, where when a woman walk into the room and men are seated, they will stand to give the woman a seat, where we get back to the place where young people respect age huh? and practice the cultural values that were good. And then the fourth hour is rebuilding, reconstructing this nation. Now, anybody who's running for president will talk of the fourth hour because it is obvious that we need to rebuild the infrastructure of this nation that was destroyed during the war years. But I say to you, my friend, unless we grab the first three hours, the fourth hour will be a waste of time. If you and myself cannot respect each other, we don't necessarily have to love each other, but when we respect each other, I must realize that whatever rights I have, you are entitled to the same right, and vice versa, you know? And we got to change. They cannot be the same old, same old thing. It has to be different. This is why I want to be president, okay? If we don't respect each other, if we don't work together as one people, if we don't bring back those values, we can build all the roads, all the skyscrapers. We're likely to destroy them again. But on a reconciled country where every Liberian feels that he or she has something at stake, where, Moro where Liberia does not revolve around Morovia, but where Liberia is 43,000 square miles of 4.5 million people, this country is going to go places. Those values we want to uh, possess as a country, like a lone star, you think what led to us losing such position? Well, over the years, we had war. We had a war. We had a war that lasted too long. A war that destroyed our country, killed about 10% of our population, 
displaced so many others and the social order was broken so it's time for us to be able to talk about the good things like i said you become president you can't legislate i can pass a law to say you must respect the older people or to say that a man should take care uh, uh, well yeah we can pass a law to say you take care of your children okay and your wayward daddy we're we, we all responsible for that but you know these are things that I like to be able to talk. I talk about family values. I'd be able to sit and say, look, I've been married to my college sweetheart for 42 years. Well, next year, it'll be 43 years. Okay? And I can tell you how to talk about, how to take care of a family, what it entails, and hope that everybody else will listen and hear it. And then we can talk about how we move this country forward. Do you still see the presence of those verses that led us to war, conflict? Say again. Do you still see the verses that led us to war in the past? We have not dealt with the vices that one could easily say led us to war. Where the corruption, ethnic division, lack of education, poverty, you know, where people, a sizable portion of the population, feel left out. These are the things that we must work towards building this country in a different way. Okay? We have to end corruption, for example. You know, corruption is an insidious tax where it imposes on the poor. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. We have to stop that. I have said, Make me president of this country, and the war on corruption will be won. President Salif said to us in her annual message, she and her vice president, Joe Barker, together, have been unable to deal with corruption. They've been unable to reconcile this country. We will start leadership by example. We will fight the battle against corruption by putting in place the three S's, systems, shame, and sanction. Probably the most important thing is that I'm going to make sure that the Ministry of Justice, especially the prosecuting attorneys, will operate independent of the presidency of Liberia. I don't want the Minister of Justice or any prosecuting attorney come into the mansion and say, oh, Mr. President, a friend of yours is involved with the misappropriation of public funds. He will still appoint the Minister of Justice, of course. Of course. And he will still serve at my will and pleasure. But he will not come to the mansion to ask me how to do his job or whether to prosecute someone. When he reports to you, he or she will uh, Say again. He to you. He or she will <coughs> Right. Generally, but when it comes to these specific cases, you know, because it's not good for the country. We learned that from the United States of America, where federal attorneys do not go to the White House, right, to ask questions as to how to, whether or not to proceed. In fact, the contact is very minimal. And I want to do the same thing in Liberia to make sure that when corruption is suspected, one is charged, indicted, and prosecuted. As the president, I want to hear about it, just like any Irish citizen on the radio, read it in the papers, that John Brown, regardless of his status or his class, had been arrested and being prosecuted. You know, we must stop the ethnic divide. You know, like some people in the race, like they, they, there's the whole campaign on ethnicity. We cannot do that. This country, you we are a few people, 4.5 million persons. We have a common destiny. It is time that we realize that we are in this thing together. And we are just Liberians, nothing else. Plain, simple, all Liberians. On our education, we want to work with the current public-private partnership program. Education of our young people or the people of Liberia, if you will, because... <laughs> <clears throat> the Liberty Party policy, policy uh, education policy is entitled Education from Cradle to Grave. 
Okay? So education will not just be about young people. It will be about old, older people as well. Even, especially those women or men and women who work full time but feel within themselves that the need to advance the education level will have adult literacy program. Now, with regard to your program, education is the primary responsibility of government. But, of course, I look forward to working with the private sector because government cannot afford to carry the burden alone. But I will not have it contracted out in a way that we focus establishing certain standards. As I said to you before, I realize the standards are low. I realize the, the education policies or any curriculum and may not be relevant to what people need to do today. I realize they're not synchronized. So we will have our education ministry setting standards. So when, while we're working with the private sector, we'll make sure that they follow the standards that we set for our schools. The current government faces a terrible challenge with the budget. Uh, the currently we have that revenue keeps low or to, to, to lower, which requires that the budget lower as well. Uh, how you what will you do to raise revenues? And what or how will you pay for what you have promised? Like uh, some of the uh, promises to reform and what of you what will you get the money or how will you raise the money to uh, to pay for those things? And say if you have to prioritize under a budget constraint situation, what will you prioritize? What are the areas you prioritize and why? You see, the global economy may not lend itself to an increased level of revenue within the short run of the next administration. However, there are two sides to the two sides to the equation. There's revenue and there's expenditure. So when you cannot increase revenue, the option you're left with is to reduce expenditure. First thing we're going to do, we'll realize that according to studies, a country like Liberia, where the corruption level is extremely high, government tend to lose about 30% of its revenue to corruption. We want to be able to stop corruption and save that money. We also have to deal with the inefficiency and waste in government. I'll give you an example. Government spends millions of dollars buying vehicles. The legal lifespan of a vehicle is three years. After three years, what happened to that vehicle? Before we buy vehicles to replace it, that vehicle must have a salvage value. And government will have a program for the disposition of those vehicles with salvage value, realizing some revenue, even from that from those vehicles that will be used towards buy new vehicles. Okay? We also like to cut down, cut down some of those waste in government. Foreign travel, for example. I intend to be to put a lot of emphasis on domestic work. Now, give President Sully credit. The woman inherited a prior state. She reconnected Liberia to the international community. Right? Now it's time for a president who has a domestic agenda for this country. So I will not be traveling much. I will be home. Uh, my ministers will not be traveling much. We will use foreign embassies, our embassies, and foreign missions to deal with last things that need to be dealt with abroad. Okay? And so we will find every way to save money so that while revenue remains low, our expenditure side is reduced so that it don't be difficult for us to manage this country. I can promise the librarian people one thing. I realize that for too long, the average librarian has been asked to tighten his or her belt 
because of the economy, while government functionaries better have expanded. It's time to stop that. If the average Liberian man is asked to take his belt, government will take his belt as well. Okay? We're going to stop spending so much money on expensive vehicles in this country. Those government officials that are traveling abroad, no first class, no business class. We all will fly economy class. You know? Make sure that we save money. Invest in, in things. But we're also going to grow this economy. Like I said, if you want to raise tax dollars, you have to expand the economic base. Okay? I don't believe on squeezing everything that produces money. But right now, there is a whole level of economic activities that without mainstream revenue generation. Let me give you one example. I grow my cassava. I bring it and sell it. No taxes realized from that. No revenue realizes from that. You don't blame them for that because government has contributed nothing to them growing their cassava. But I want to open the Agriculture Cooperative Development Bank again and have farmers uh, give farmers the access to loan so that they can grow bigger farms. And because farmers are farmers, they're not necessarily business people. So we're going to use, you see, we got the Liberty Party approach is holistic. We're going to use young Liberians graduated from universities with degrees in economics and finances, <coughs> encourage them to establish corporate vehicles that will connect the farmers to the market. So the person comes, go his farm after getting a loan from the bank. He doesn't want to come to be bothered with selling things in the market. You got somebody coming to the farm kit and buying it, taxes paid when he get money. So you increase the base, okay, and we can generate more money. So talking about your priority, why are the really prioritized and why? You know, the way I see our country, there's so much to be done to be done. And some people like to list things and say, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do the other. I'm gonna be attempting to do much. But I like to prioritize reconciliation. I like to prioritize transparency in government. You know, I want to have Palawa Huts, if not Monday, quarterly, moving from county to county. Okay? Let people begin to realize that we are one people and that we are all in this together. Transparency, the law requires. As the president, I report to the nation once a year. I want to report to the nation at least once a quarter. Why? Would that require a new law? Say again. Would that require a new law? No, no, no. As president, you know, the law is you must do it once a year. The law doesn't say you cannot do it more than once a year, right? So I will do more than the law requires, you know, because... I think what I want to do is I want to talk about transparency. Say we start the fiscal year and we project that we'll be able to raise a million dollars. Okay? And you say to the Liberian people, with this projection, we expect to undertake A, B, C as projects. <coughs> if we're unable to raise a hundred million dollars, you go back to the people and say, look. We will not be able to undertake the projects because we were unable to raise the funds we expected. But here's the catch. If we have passed a budget that said $100 million revenue, and by some windfall, we raise $120 million, you must come back to the people and say, look, we realized an extra $20 million that we didn't expect. And therefore, I'm going to pass a supplemental budget and this is how we're going to use the extra money. Because if you don't do that to the people, the temptation would be there for people to use that money for reasons not approved by the representatives and senators. And some of that, some of that money might slip in their pocket. But it serves as a deterrent once the people are informed on a regular basis what's coming into revenue and what's going out. <coughs> 
So with regards to the budget, what will you spend more money on? Well, I can tell you what I'll spend more money on, but I think I'm going to increase budgetary allotment on education, on health care. Right now, I think government spends about 7% of budget on education. I, I would like to double that, okay? Because uh, the two issues, two things, that could be a source, sources of instability in this country. Education, or the lack of education, and unemployment. So we must spend, increase the education budget, make sure more of our people are going to school, okay? Make sure that the young people on the streets during school hours who are selling candies and bubble gums and stuff are off the street in school. So I'm gonna spend a lot of money in those two areas. So with regards to the TRC recommendations, what are your plans? The TRC is recommended um, a two-tier approach, retributive justice and retro re retrorative justice. I think I'm going to follow ret retrorative justice. We're going to have the Palau Hut thing, where we sit around and call those people who were named in the report as having committed offenses against humanity and have them come and talk about it. Okay? And hopefully the victim will be made whole and we can heal this country once and for all and move our nation forward. Okay, so I just a period in Liberia who um, experienced this Ebola crisis. What were your role played and where were you? Ebola? Yes, sir. <coughs> it was a sad period in our history. I mean, you can't imagine, I don't know where you were here, but you can't imagine what it was like to leave my house and I turn on the radio and I, and I hear on the radio that a few houses away from where I live, the Ebola crew was there. And then I'm driving, and there's this crowd on the street. Why? Because someone, some Ebola person had died. And you're hearing of all the medical practitioners who died because government didn't have simple things like protective wear for medical practitioners. I took it upon myself as the first national politician to leave Morovia. I travel as far as Nimma, to give Liberian a sense that we were in this thing together, that Ebola was not a one-man thing. Any one of us could have been victimized by it. Whatever little resources my wife and I could muster from our private uh, sources, we donated money to several counties, to the healthcare, to buy gloves and to buy whatever it took to help our people. I was in Bon County. Of course, I went home in Bassa. I was in Mount Gibi, you know? But the thing was just to say, look, we're in this thing together. And as a national politician, I won't leave because there's Ebola. Nothing will stop me from reaching out and serving the interests of our people. Also, it was generally, uh, it was generally assumed that your running mate, because of the past appointed post he heard, would not be cleared by the Code of Conduct. The selection of Mr. Harrison Conway suggests a willingness to go with the flow if the laws of the Republic are being ignored. Why did, why did you not choose a running mate who would be more likely to be cleared by the National Elections Commission? Why should I trust you to respect the Constitution and the country's laws, given this decision? Well, let me disagree with your premise, right? That I did not comply or decide to comply with the law. I know the law. Trust me. That's my error. Okay? And Harrison Conway passed the test. Yeah. I knew for day one. The, the Election Commission made a mistake. They missed, the, they missed the law. 
all the lawyers on the commission failed. They made mistakes, terrible mistakes. Some of them are students. They made mistakes. Before, before, before the course rolling into this matter, people generally feel that uh, already because they could have come up to vote that coach will resign for a required time before contesting for positions. And the other general <laughs> talk that already he will not be accepted by the, uh, the NEC, but yet you went ahead to appoint him. Why didn't you look for someone else you, and declare that? You, you, you have to look at what the law says. <laughs> what what did the law say? The law says anyone who desires eh, to run mm, for an elected office should resign. The question I ask, did Harrison Conway desire to run? Could any vice presidential candidate desire to run? No. Harrison Conway could never have desired to be my running mate. Only I could desire. And I had no government job, so I didn't have to resign. When I asked Harrison to be my running mate, there is no way he could have complied with a two-year thing. Even if we assume his desire was kind of immediately when I asked him. Hmm? He couldn't resign. He would have to, to carry him two years back to resign, right? He didn't have any desire before that. So, 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 so how will you describe the decision? Uh, as regard to respect to the Constitution. The decision of the Supreme, Supreme Court? Court? Your decision to have I selected Harrison County. Well, I just said, said to you, my decision, decision was in keeping with law. law. It, was it was sound, sound in keeping with law. law. Any Bible tell you otherwise doesn't know, know the law. law. Eh? Currently, the Deputy Party does not, con uh, does not control the executive branch of government. So we cannot uh, tell <coughs> what it will do uh, if it is elected. However, uh, there are several members of the party currently in the legislature. What have those lawmakers accomplished along the line of the Liberty Party's policy that should give us confidence in the party to meet? You have to ask them, really. You know, it's not my role. They share a vision. I would hope so. The guy elected on the party. Ticket. And the party, party has support. Policy. I will hope they share our vision, <coughs> but you have to ask them. I mean, it wouldn't be fair to them or to me for me to answer for them. I have problem, as you can imagine, answering for myself. I don't about answering for all the other guys. I get that's a political leader. You follow the workings of 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 of, of your presidents who are in government. Or are you preaching for for change? Right. So that's what I say. I cannot talk for them. It's just not fair to them. It's just not fair to me. That's why we're having election October 10th. They're going to answer to the people who elected them. <coughs> one, of, one of the four arrows under your vision for Liberia is reconciliation, which will, which will also be one of your priority areas, as we have said. But how can you preach reconciliation when some may say you have driven a wedge in the country between your followers and those of Bezonga. If Bezonga Finley, <laughs> if he cannot reconcile residents of one county, how can you be expected to do so with the entire country? You know, in our country, sometimes we tend to misuse words. The former government we have selected is called democracy. Democracy entails having election. You run against me. You win, I lose. There's no reconciliation issue there involved. I run twice to be president. <coughs> you ever heard anybody talking about reconciliation between Ellen Sally and myself? Nobody talks about it. Why? I don't take offense. No offense to a Mr. Sally, President Sally defeating me. That part of the thing that we agreed to do. We agreed to run in a democratic election. When you lose, you walk away in a magnanimous way. There's no reconciliation. Personally, I don't have any confusion because she beat me twice. No. There's no reconciliation. So as two sons of one county, what is your relationship in Philly? Uh, you're my little brother. My younger brother. My god brother. Are you talking friendly? Talk? Well, you're business. 
Ain't got nothing to do with public if you want me to feel like you. But I can't explain to you. There ain't no reconciliation. There ain't no fuss between us. Okay? It's no fuss. It's a political difference. He wants, he wants to do it. So he ran, he lost. I won, I lost. <coughs> so since so you stepped out as pro tem of the government Senate, what have you been doing? What have you done to improve the country? To help Liberia? Is that you asking what I've been doing in Liberia? I've been to practicing help, To help in the interest of Liberia, to help Liberia and Liberians. You know, my, wife and, my wife and I, together, and I think it's safe to say, we've educated more Liberians than any other national politician in this country. Our scholarship program has benefited more people, except for J.J. Roberts, whose scholarship program is much older than ours. Okay? So that's what we do. Help you talk about Ebola. I just mentioned, I went around the country giving money to hospitals to help to fight against Ebola. Okay? And we'll continue to do what we can do to help our country, even also our government. Liberia in 2005 elected Africa's first female <coughs> to become president. Yet we have no representation in government, in all branches of the government. So if elected, what will you do to significantly boost the participation of women in the government, especially in the cabinet and the legislature? What will you do differently if you are elected? Why should you, why should we believe you? What are the policies that have been taken within the party's current primary to boost women participation? And what were the results? That's a, that's a loaded question. Uh, as president of this country, at least 40% of the cabinet polls will be women. I believe in women. They are qualified in this country, especially. They're hard workers, and they tend to make things happen. These are my most favorite people happen to be women. Of course, one of them dead now, my mother, my wife, and my daughter. Three people who I believe in a whole lot. During the election, the Liberty Party tried its best to ensure that as many women as possible would be elected. We even left some legislative seats uncontested because we had hope we would have gotten women for them. And those seats are not filled today or will not be filled by the Liberty Party tomorrow. So, you know, we'll do whatever we can do to ensure that all has something at stake in our country. So, generally, I know... With your policies, you disagree with some of the current regime's approach to governance. But what do you think are major achievements of the Salif led administration? You're asking me to promote. What do you think? You're asking me to promote Salif Baka administration? That's not my job. If you live in this country, then I guess you see. That's not my you job. Say. You go ask them what they so tell you. That's why you're not seeing anything positive, <laughs> anything achieved, anything good you can achieve. I think you should ask them. I think they'll, they'll be able to speak on what they accomplished. So, what is something fun about you that people will be surprised to know about? What is something fun about you? Like all will be fun? Yeah, fun, fun. A fun at the end? Yes, sir. That like will be surprised to find out. Hmm. I don't know. You know, what's, what's this fun thing about me that people will be surprised? You know, uh, I'm, a, I'm a regular guy. Uh, I like to play Scrabble. Uh... I'll I tell you this, I went out after the gathering and uh, someone and the guys were drinking and I said, uh, give me a stout. And so the lady across the table didn't hear and then the brother stopped. She said, wow, brother's going to drink your stout? You know, so the open one, I took a sip of the stout and she said to her friend, they told me later on, she couldn't believe it. 
you know, but I mean, I'm a regular guy. I'm a regular guy. You know, like I went to a PHP today. <coughs> and the, the, the speaker said, you know, it's such a great thing to have you here. You come to our community. PHP, people used to think of PHP as a bad place. But now with this, we, we, we got professionals living here. And it occurred to me, and I said to them, I said, you know, we have something in common. I lived here before. I said, you know, when I came from Basa to attend the University of Liberia, they say, they say I was smart then. I don't know, some, probably something happened to me later on. But I got a scholarship to live on campus, LU campus. And vacation time, I didn't want to go back to Basel. I mean, I want to enjoy Monrovia. But I had nowhere to stay in Monrovia. So a group of friends and I rented rooms across from the South Beach prison. Right? And then where we lived. My, most of my vacation, I spent it. And those were happy, good years of mine. So they were surprised to hear that I have also lived South Beach. Okay. And I, I, I mean, I know what it's like to be there. I mean, some of the things we did, I wouldn't say, you know, at this point. I'm too old to mention them, you know. But, uh, yes, I had some good time. And any family you want to please me? You know, thank you for taking your time to talk with me. I appreciate it. And like my daughter said, I should apologize for the fact that it took a while for me to find the time for this interview. I'm glad I did. It was enlightening. But I'd just like to say to Liberians, 2017, October 10th, <coughs> it's a game changer in our country. Ellen Johnson Sully, say what you may of her has done what she could do. None of us who are running will be a first female president. A lot of things that happened in Liberia over the last 12 years <coughs> happened because Ellen Johnson said it was the first female president of our country and on the African continent. So our next president has to be someone who has been tested, who has been proven, having the, not just the academic or intellectual qualification to say, but one who has the integrity and the relevant experience. <coughs> if we're going to move our country forward, I ask you to look at the Liberty Party ticket, Rumskin and Conway. We're ready to serve our country. We have a vision. We have plans of action to implement our vision. And we have the political will. I thank you. Thank you very much.